Hey everybody, it's Mike uh, for another episode of my uh, vlog. Thanks again. We're back at CBRE's World Headquarters, 200 Park Avenue. So thank you so much to Steve Siegel and uh, everybody at CBRE for hosting us today. So one of the things I know that I'm guilty of uh, is that I, at CRE Tech, focus too much on office. And I think my next guest would absolutely agree with me. <laughs> um, uh, guilty is charged, right? Uh, Office seems to take up a lot of conversation, a lot of press. And, you know, it's sort of my mission to help the commercial real estate industry discover tech. I need to do a better job, clearly, of educating them as to what's happening on the multifamily side because clearly most of the landlords, a lot of the landlords that are active in office are also active in multifamily, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of the other food groups all touch multifamily. I'm blessed to have a great relationship with the National Multifamily Housing Council out of DC. We'll be speaking at, uh, on a panel, or moderating a panel at their OPTEC event in the uh, middle of November. And so I'm really spending a lot more time with the multifamily community. So the, uh, the theme of this particular vlog is on multifamily. So I've got uh, four of, in my opinion, the hottest, uh, fastest growing, most innovative startups, most interesting in the multifamily space with me today. So thank you all for coming. Uh, blessed to have Karen from Nestio here with us. Adam of Move. Derek of Bixby. Last but not least, Ori of Ollie. Wonderful, thanks all so much for joining me today. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. So Karen, let's start with you. Uh, you and I have known each other for a few years. I'm blessed to uh, call you my friend. I hope you the uh, feel the same way. <laughs> Cut you off right there. Karen is a, is a rock star in our, in our world and a real trailblazer. Um, I think it'd be great to just start with sort of, you know, short summary of how you uh, got to found Nestio and the, quickly about your journey and, and sure. what the platform's doing today. Sure, yeah, I'll give you the abbreviated, abbreviated version. Um, so I initially started Nestio and really came into real estate technology, prop tech to begin with. Uh, it was because I was trying to scratch my own itch, right? I was a frustrated consumer, uh, specifically a frustrated apartment hunter, um, trying to find a place to live, was endlessly frustrated by the process. Um, initially started a company that was B2C, so it was a consumer-facing consumer, consumer facing application because I had a lot of empathy, right, mm -hmm. for, for folks like me, right? And I wanted folks to streamline that process and make a more informed decision on where to live. Ideally, remove the stress and, and uh, move on. Um, what I learned in that process, and I spent a ton of time with multifamily owner-operators, fee managers, um, I started to flex my empathy muscle on that side. And I learned when I, you know, the answer to the question for me, which was, well, give me, talk to me about the software, the technology, the tools you have at your disposal to deliver a more, more modern experience. Um, the answer was very little. Mm. I saw a much bigger opportunity on that side. I saw a way to make a much more significant impact. But ultimately, you know, again, through the lens of how do you marry up what's good for the consumer, also make it good for the business and use technology as a vehicle mm -hmm. to do that. So pivoted the business, never looked back. I'd right. say it was, a, it was a successful pivot. Extreme. Um, and you know, our, our goal at Nestio is we build marketing software um, for the multifamily side so that they can deliver those types of experiences that we expect today. Wonderful, wonderful. I think that's probably a theme we're gonna hear a lot of from our other uh, uh, panelists. Uh, Adam, fellow Jersey boy, welcome. Uh, what's been the experience? How'd you get to move? Yes, yeah, so um, quick refresher on Moved. We are uh, we make moving really simple by providing an app and a concierge service to coordinate everything. So moving doesn't have to be so stressful. Story is very similar to Karen's. Uh, scratching my own itch, my own itch. I was frustrated. I'd moved four times in four years. I've now done eight moves in seven years. So. Uh, I noticed it was a really big pain point for me, and uh, I had some family members going through moves and uh, crying on moving day. I mean, every, everybody's got their painful, man. everybody's got a horror story, right? It's typically ranked top five, top ten most stressful life event, which is just crazy. Um, and there's really no, not only just software solution, but nobody there relationship managing this process. Like we have in real estate, we have brokers, we have property managers who help you through that phase of your move where you're finding that place. But as you shift to moving into that place, there's nobody there who helps you through it. Right. And, and you're not an expert at moving. You don't know who's good, what's normal, what's not. So you're going into this very, uh, 
anxious and stressed. And so what we aim to do is eliminate stress from the process of moving. We do that by sort of aggregating all these different tasks you have to get done, booking movers, storage, updating your address into one application, uh, and then complementing that with a concierge service because you don't move all the time, but we move people all the time. So we know what needs to get done. And you're busy going about your day, and we're still getting things done in the background. And moving doesn't have to be so stressful. Wonderful. Thank you yeah. for those of us that have also had horrible experiences yeah. moving. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Derek Bixby, you guys have been a wonderful supporter of CRE Tech and the community. Uh, tell us about you know, how the platform uh, got started and, and what it does. Sure, sure. So the platform started two and a half years ago. Uh, Mark, our CEO, and our co-founder, um, they were chatting, they were, they were good friends, and his co-founder, Alex O'Hebshelm, was taking over property management at a firm called Empire Management. And he came to Mark and he said, listen, the way I'm running things is out of date. It's a bit archaic. I'm only taking paper checks. I'm looking at people's email addresses and filing cabinets. Like, I need a way to update this. And Mark said, OK, you know, he had just, he had just finished like coding boot camp. He wanted to make a move into, into this type of space. And so Bixby started, quite simply, as a platform that had uh, rent payments, messaging, and maintenance requests. And it was really built for Alex to make sure that he could update his operations. Mm -hmm. And over the next two and a half years, we've worked incredibly closely with other property management uh, firms uh, to, to really develop a more and more robust app that now includes uh, tenant services, everything from events around the building, discounts to local businesses, uh, on-demand goods and services. Heavy on the amenity side. Heavy on the amenity side, absolutely. And, um, and you know, when I first joined about seven months ago, uh, Mark, Mark and I had known each other for a little while. We, first spoke about it, and as someone who had lived in New York City, had lived in a place where I could not get in touch with my property manager had I wanted to, uh, I saw how this could, could really differentiate the experience for any tenants. I was very excited to, to come over to try to help build the company. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, Ori, so <laughs> you know this is coming. So first of all, fellow part-time Jersey, uh, welcome. Jersey. You got another Jersey guy here, by the way. I don't You've know. Got I a Jersey know girl that. over here. Was it an old Jersey panel? Yes. I love that. We love should have called this Jersey. Jersey. I did not, right. know. How did we not know this. Let's, 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 let's just spend the rest this. of the time Summer talking about it. And I love the pride. There we go. I love that. I love that. Really great. Likewise. Essex County. We've lost half the audience. We're in, we're in they're moment. gone. We've lost them all. Yeah, they're all gone. They're okay. falling asleep. Okay. There you go. There you go. Okay, there you go. Part time. Um, okay, Ori, here we go. So, as somebody who is old as fuck, doesn't understand co-living, but the more I read about it, the more I learn about it, I'm going, yeah, that's pretty good. I, I, I get it. I don't know if I could do it. But I get that it's not, um, maybe not the target audience. Um, but I love the concept. I love it for many, many, many reasons. I think it's great. I think Ali is certainly the leader uh, in, in the pack. How did you get to Ali, what were you doing before? And tell us a little bit about the platform. So I've been working in real estate technology for about 20 years. Um, I've built a uh, couple of different systems uh, on the residential side, on the commercial side, mortgage side. Um, I've known the founders of Ollie for about five years when they came out with the idea and said, we're going to quit our jobs and focus on co-living. And co-living is really communal living. And at Ollie Co-Living, we were trying to um, have a communal experience and a simple lifestyle at a price point that, that. individuals can enjoy. So um, Ali started as an idea by one of the co-founders, Andrew, who uh, came to New York from Florida, rented an apartment in the financial district, um, and decided to rent out his living room, put up a partition wall, and rented two spots. His rent, I think, was like $2,800 a month rented each spot for $1,400. Put an ad on Craigslist and within, I think, bulb. two hours had <laughs> 200 people contacting him trying to rent the apartment. So he did that for a while, rented another spot, and you know the idea grew from that. And the tenants that were in there are still friends, so it was like a communal kind of thing going on. And we grew the company, um, our first Ali was on uh, 2016 uh, on Carmel Place in um, New York City on 28th Street, uh, where we have uh, 55, 155 micro suites. And now we are the largest co-living specialist in North America. 
We have a building that just opened in um, Long Island City. It's 168 units, 422 bedrooms. They're expanding. Opened up in May. Yeah. And we're about 50% leased wow. already, way above production. And you're expanding geographically, I know. And right? we're expanding uh, geographically, nationally, yeah. and also internationally. That's great. We're talking. That's great. Again, I, I think uh, it's something I don't know if I could do, as you know, because look at me, but you could do uh, it. I, maybe I could, maybe I could. But I think the, you know, I, I try my best with to growing kids to live a minimalist lifestyle as best I can. So I think for many reasons, it's a great concept and I, I think it's got a lot of benefits societally. Um, Karen, Nestio. So one of the most extraordinary things about Nestio besides its leadership is how fast you've grown and how, how you've been able to scale that platform. And you're, you're marketing to landlords, right? So I, I know that's not an easy um, uh, thing to accomplish. What's been some of the strategies that have been most successful? How have you been able to grow and convince these landlords that they need to embrace technology and Nestio? Yeah, you know, I mean, I'd say, listen, like the landscape looks a lot different today than it did 36 right. months ago, right? right. So, and I'm, and I'm sure these guys can testify to it, right? I was salesperson zero at the right. company and I locked myself in a room and in our co-working suite a few years ago and I was dialing for dollars. And at that point I was dialing for free right. because I was like, let's just, just yes. get on the platform. Yes. Um, and the response, um, you know, frankly, we need to be a lot smarter and a lot more surgical about it, mm -hmm. you know, two, three years ago, mm -hmm. where you really had to target, frankly, early adopters and mm -hmm. folks who saw, um, you know, a couple years where, where, where the industry was headed, who would jump in and say, great, we'll give you a shot. Right. Whereas today, um, those conversations look a, look a lot different, right? right? Folks understand that technology is important. They understand that they have optionality and they're trying to figure out, okay, what tech stack can I deploy to mm -hmm. that, you know, that would work best for me? Kind of future-proof, obviously, my my uh, operations and my strategy. But it, it was hard, yeah. man. It was, it was tough. You know, yeah, two, three know. years ago, you know, the sort of broader base of folks were like, listen, what I have is working just fine. And I would often liken these folks to the house at the casino. They were right. making money hand over fist, whether yeah. they were on a spreadsheet or on something new like Nestio. Um, however, I think based on you know where the industry's headed and the conversations I'm in today, um, the way we've been able to scale has been, I've, I'll ground it with tenacity and perseverance, right, sure. but I think those folks having a great experience referring us to others, being able to leverage some of the network effects we have, particularly in New York City or mm -hmm. with folks with multi-city portfolios, and it served us really well. Yeah, you've done amazing. It's been great to watch your uh, meteoric growth. Um, Adam, so from Moved, you're a relatively new startup. Um, we, uh, you're one of your lead investors, John Helm of RETV, is a good friend of mine and the platform. So w tell us a little bit about how you're going to scale. I mean, you're already growing pretty fast. What is the plan to scale Moved? Yeah, um, similar to what Karen just said, I think, you know, when we started... We've been live for about uh, two and a half years now. And we always knew that partnering with real estate was important. Again, sort of getting that consumer from finding a place to moving into that place, that inflection point's really important. Uh, nobody would really take our calls or, or listen to us, notably in New York where you know demand is so high and they can just sort of do as they please. Um, the conversation's changed a lot. Uh, I think you are seeing you know, owners and operators knowing they need to adopt technology and have more amenities and, and um, better platform for tenants. And we're, we're a part of that trend in, in being an amenity for moving. <clears throat> Excuse me. So on top of our direct-to-consumer efforts and you know, we have a really high NPS, good referrals, uh, a number of channels we work through, real estate is really important to us. And you know, I think when we think about scaling, being in the property and helping them to operate, helping a leasing office, you know, not have to call that moving company and track them down, a vendor they don't know or really have a relationship with, um, not having to track down that tenant during the middle of their day when they're when they're busy, instead coming to us and seeing on a dashboard, you know, where the, the tenant is at in their move, not having to book elevators and parking, not have to process insurance for the moving company. We take that load off of them. And I want to hug you right now, by the way. I really, I'm sorry, I'm getting very emotional. No, um, please, let's, let's make this warm and fuzzy. No. Uh, so I think they're starting to see the value prop in that. And then also just, um, you know, a property manager I recently talked to had these, um, you know, core values where they talked about even providing a good experience on the move out. And I think that's, that's one anecdote in a larger trend of tenant experience. 
And you know, even if they're losing that customer, maybe they can get them again because they had a good experience in, in, in their portfolio. So uh, you know, we complement that really well. And I think as we look at scaling real estate, it's really important to that yeah. strategy. I think you bring up that the key words that we hear over and over again are uh, whether office or multifamily is tenant experience. And I know, Derek, that's what you guys are focused on, right? So Absolutely, yeah. tell us about the expansion strategy. How, how are we going to sure, conquer so over, the world? Sure, so over the next year, we're very excited to triple the size of the team, mostly in sales and marketing roles. Uh, a lot of what the two of you just said mirrors my experience just completely. Um, <laughs> you know, what, what's been great uh, with Bixby is once we get in the room, once we get the product in front of somebody, I think there's kind of that moment they're like, oh, yeah, I get it. That could help me, but that will also help my tenants in a big way. Um, it's getting to that point that is that is that is often the the real struggle. But you know we've seen over the last few months we've seen a ton of of inbound interest, which has been awesome and really refreshing because uh, because before that it was just me picking up the phone and dialing. So it's it's very nice when people come in and say, hey, listen, I'd like to hear some more about this. Um, but I you know I think I think our platform serves all, really all classes of multifamily. But where we're finding a lot more interest, especially on the amenity side, is. Um, is in these class A buildings. All these bigger, bigger property managers and developers are starting to be really interested in seeing and seeing how this can really help differentiate. So, so excited, excited for the next year. Yeah, yeah. Ori, from your perspective, I mean, you you've got a little bit of a different um, expansion strategy, obviously. What I'm curious to know is, you know, how, how do you take down the real estate, the, right? How do you expand physically, and then how do you go about attracting consumers to your platform? That's so, unique. yeah, I mean, the expansion in terms of the real estate, we work with developers, typically class A buildings, um, and we design the floor plans from the beginning. So we have an architectural team, and we densify each floor plan. We make it in such a way that um, those den the densification can be removed if it converts to a condo or whatever. So a lot of the um, questions we are asked, like what happens if this does get converted? Right. You know, so we build it that way. Um, from a consumer level, like what we're experiencing right now is pure joy. Our, <laughs> our, the, 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 you know, we, we have a social division, it's called Ali Social, and we put on weekly events for our residents and people who are, um, part of the Ali Social, so it's not only tenants, but largely it is. Um, and I come to these events and they're like, what's, what's the catch? Do you is have to be a <laughs> member of Ali to come? No, you don't. Can you, I just show up? For, for a fee, you can join <laughs> yearly. <laughs> but well for you, played. you can come. Well played. You, you can <laughs> absolutely. I'll use the jersey card. <laughs> okay, fine. fine. I'll get you a, uh, an no, it's app okay. It sounds fun. Yeah. Awesome. So you were saying, I'm sorry, I interrupted. So back to our, our, from tenants coming, you know, we go through a traditional route of, you know, brokerages and what have you to populate our buildings or, you know, through, to get them in there. Um, and we have a tech ecosystem to keep them happy. So, you know, communal living, once again, or co-living, we're enhancing their experience and giving them like enriched lifestyle. So we offer hotel style living, which includes weekly housekeeping, linens, towels, um, television, Wi-Fi. Okay, I'm in. Everything. I'm in, I'm done, you got we, me. We, we like to say, bring your toothbrush, your laptop, we'll give you everything, including friends. Go. I'm good with that, Roy. Uh, that's okay. That's great, man. I'm good. I love it. I, I think it's great. Um, one of the things I think that's really interesting about, particularly in the multifamily say, space that I've seen, is the collaboration with other startups and uh, how you all sort of integrate. What, what would you, any thoughts on sort of how Nestio integrates and plays nice with other startups, other technology companies, and how that makes uh, you know, much more efficient for landlords? I would argue it's a competitive, at least it's something that we tout as a competitive differentiator for us. We are a very open platform and whether that's a formal integration or partnership or even an informal mm. partnership. I'm constantly meeting with folks. I'm Great. actually excited to chat with these guys post-session because my brain's going yeah, about, yeah. about you, know, you know, sort of other things that we could do here. Um, largely because, you know, for me, it's like that's, that's how you can kind of help each other, right? And I think whether it's informal introductions or referrals or something much more formal, I don't know, it's my belief that this isn't a zero-sum game. Right. And frankly, even just given 
sort of the roles we all sort of play within multifamily very, very different mm -hmm. and touching very different aspects of the process all through sort of a very similar sort of vision or reason why. Um, and I think if you can integrate, you really have sort of this best of, best of all world scenario versus choosing one or the other right. and you can create um, much more, much more uh, flexibility yep, for your yep, customers. Yep. Which is what I'll, it's all about. I'll, I'll Please. go on that and I mean more, even at the conceptual level like I'll get really meta here. Society was built on specialization, right? And and you know, we have startups I mean across the panel here and <clears throat> other folks doing awesome things throughout the city and throughout the country um, really focused on one part of this ecosystem and rather than try to build that and hack it together half assed you know as our company I'd rather just partner with them and and you know hopefully the we align incentives the economics work and, and customers are happy because at the end of the day that's I think what we're all after is just a happier customer and a better ecosystem for me I'm really fortunate uh, not a lot of people play in the moving space and uh, a lot of, you know, we talked earlier about how much money's gone into prop tech this year. Um, I love it. Yeah. Keep growing. Yeah. Everybody keep yeah. growing. We'll just partner um, and, and really be that moving layer on top of it. So, uh, and, and I think what I've seen in those conversations is um, not only a willingness, but an, an excitement to, to partner um, and say, hey, you guys do this really well. Come do that for our customer and it'll make, it'll, it makes us look good as well. Totally. Yeah. And for us, for us, integration is incredibly important for a couple of reasons. On the services side, we need to have people to fulfill those services. So I know that we've had conversations with the guys that moved before. Um, and, and so, again, to, to sort of echo that, we want to be as open as, as open as possible. We want those services to be fulfilled by the best companies there are out there, right? And then in addition to that, Bixby is really, it's a tenant-facing portal. This is something for your tenants to be able to do, or residents to be able to do anything they need to be able to do in their apartment. But we understand there's more, there's some more layers to property management, the accounting, the leasing, et cetera. And so we, exactly, and, and so we need to be, uh, so we want to be as open as possible and integrated with all of those other platforms so we can work with as many people as we can. From our side, so we have a lot of different buildings, a lot of different operators, and a lot of different software that these operators are using. So we are trying to normalize into an app for our residents that they'll be able to do many things, such as you know find out about their packages and their maintenance requests, but go down deep and unlock their door, order more supplies for their room, so integration is super important. So whenever I start talking to a partner from the development side, we get down deep and find out who they're partnering with and you know, what their software systems are. We do have preferred you know, systems that we work with, but you know, as long as a software is open, you know, we have no problem getting into right, it. Right, right. One of the things that uh, I get asked a lot about when I'm out on the, on the circuit as the uh, sort of, uh, CRE Tech Ambassador at large out there is where you hear these comments where people say, well, what's going to happen to all these startups when the economy uh, slows down? And I always say, well, I, I think they grow faster, right? Because there's more pressure on tenants, uh, services, amenities, retention, efficiencies, new innovation and products and what have you. What, what, what is your thoughts about, you know, we're in a, the, probably the longest, you know, uh, boom cycle in, that I can remember in my 30 years in, in real estate, that when things do slow down a little bit, how does that impact our sector, your company, et cetera, et cetera? Anybody? From our side, our price points are anywhere from 15 to 30% lower from a tenant perspective. Um, so, you know, we feel that, you know, if there's a cycle change that, you know, we'll still be well um, positioned and all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, so right. So your product totally, completely feeds into uh, tighter economic times if indeed they come, which it's inevitable they will. Yeah. And uh, it's a different, it's alternative to what doesn't exist out there today. Exactly. And yeah. offering services on top of that. Yeah, which I love. Yeah, yeah it's great. I think yeah. to your point, uh, you know. Um, as, as vacancy rates increase, people are going to feel under more pressure to retain their tenants, uh, and something like a Bixby with the additional services can be helpful. But one thing I'll also say is that on our services platform, we offer a split with the owner of the building effectively on the affiliate commissions that we earn. 
Uh, so it can also be another line item for, right, for, right. for them as well, which can make, potentially make them a little more robust. Yeah, for us, um, we don't charge property managers anything. So there's really no, um, the, the greater economy doesn't really impact that, except for just providing an amenity for customers, operational efficiencies for, for their leasing staff um, that make it you know, really easy for, for people to move in. Uh, on the consumer side, people are still moving regardless. Uh, and we actually, because we provide our moving companies with better margins and we have a platform uh, where they operate their business, we actually get cheaper prices than you would get going to them on Google or Yelp or something like that. So from a consumer standpoint, it's still uh, better to come through us. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think when you're talking about ROI, it's always, it's just a slight shift in the conversation, mm -hmm. right? But I do think when you're looking at vacancy rates creeping up, more supply, folks are really starting to kind of lean in and say, okay, great, well, like, I mean, like, what does this mean? How do I use technology as a way to stay ahead? For, you know, be it retaining tenants, be it um, being able to expedite the process to get those folks into new units or turned units. Um, so yeah, I think it's just shifting the conversation slightly, but it's that focus on ROI, and that's true whether or not you're in an up market or a down market. Yeah, yeah. So let's do a little infomercials, just because I think it's interesting to provide specifics. So you love all of your children, obviously, equally, but if you were to highlight one, either client, and you don't have to mention name if you don't want to, sure. uh, where you, you were able to really see the impact of Nestio on, on their particular, you know, business, operation, asset, what have you. Sure. Is there one that you could talk about? Yeah, I mean, I think um, there are a couple. I'd say there's, there's one um, where, you know, focusing on a couple different sort of levers that we could, we could kind of pull here. One was uh, time to rent, right? So vacancy and obviously vacancy loss that comes along with that. And then additional deals closed, right? So being able to pull a couple levers, show someone a before and after pre-Nestio, post-Nestio based on some of the products that we had rolled out for them, um, they saw a huge lift in what they were able to do on a property basis as well as a portfolio basis because they ended up rolling us out um, across the portfolio. Um, so I think being able to show that there was a real ROI right. here, and again, even in an up market, right? Mm -hmm. You always want to, you know, if, if you're doing well, you want to be doing better, right. right? So I think being able to show that lift, and we've seen that across a large, I mean, a large swath of our clients where they're seeing that lift, but I think being able to go back and say, right. I didn't just one feed you a line of shit, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. hold me to task, right. like, I actually did this for you. And it's something that we do across all of our customers, and if they're not seeing the lift that they want, um, great, how do we put in, you know, put a plan in place to get you there? And particularly having those conversations even well in advance of a sale, where it's like, talk to me about what your goals are. Right. Let's figure out if they're realistic. Let's, either, uh, let's sanity check it, and then let's put you on a path to, to get you to where you want to be. Wonderful. Ori, you love all your properties. Is there one that you would like that you just, you know, are in awe of what you guys have done uh, that you could highlight? Yeah, I would say our Long Island City property. It's over 100,000 square feet, big, shiny glass building right at the end of I'm filming Queens my next Boulevard. blog there. I'm filming my next blog, blog there. I'm Are telling you, ready? you okay? okay. Yes. You can, we have some wonderful amenity spaces there, which we have a pool, Earth. golf simulator, <laughs> uh, <laughs> awesome gym, roof deck. So that would definitely be my child right now. <laughs> we're, we're, we're opening up in many markets in the U.S., so we'll see how they come. The children will have to compete to get yes, your affection. You That's great. Derek? Uh, so I think uh, a great example is our first client, is, is Empire Management, where you know we were able to help streamline their operations. They saw a reduction in phone calls by about 50%, and, and it really just made the lives of, of all of the property managers working there much easier. And then on, on sort of the other end of the spectrum, we started working with a, a building that BH Management manages called Taba Waters, which is a thousand unit class A brand new building out in Denver. Um, and, and the people and all the tenants have really taken to it. Any time they're booking a yoga class, they're using Bixby for it. Any time they're getting a dog walker, visitors coming in, whatever, they're using Bixby for it. And so it's, it's, it's been live for a few months, but it's been, it's been a big success and it's been great to see those people uh, adopt Bixby and, and make their life in Tavo Waters a little, little bit better. That's great. Adam, I know for you, you probably, you know, you got so many tens of thousands uh, of customers that you've successfully moved, but is there a building or something? Because I know you're, you're working also with landlords. Or yeah. That you can um, cite. So yeah, I mean, we work with a number of what we would call channel partners. They're mm -hmm. property managers, brokers, um, real estate tech, sites and platforms. Uh, we also work with storage facilities. And I think a really interesting use case is what we've done with Manhattan Mini Storage. So we started a pilot with them earlier this year. Cool. And uh, yeah, we they were using an individual moving company 
for 25 years, referring all of their business to this moving company. And um, we just got in touch with them. We started referring business their way, uh, which was a benefit of us. But then they realized we have the technology layer, we have the CX, you know, concierge uh, service that we provide to our customers. And we have a network of movers. And rather than referring an individual moving company where you're aligning your brand with that moving company's experience, you can refer us, a consumer brand, a tech platform, and where we're responsible for that referral to the moving company. And again, that specialization piece, we're really good at it. Uh, and so they've seen an uptick in, in sales and customer conversion because their sales team is only focused on closing customers and not dealing with the moves. They transfer them to us, uh, so higher customer conversion, higher customer satisfaction, no blackout dates, no geography restrictions. Our network take, takes care of everything. Um, payment and everything happens through the platform, and now we're powering 100% of Manhattan Mini Storage's business. Dude, congratulations, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, Way to go. Awesome. So finally, for me, I think um, the other topic I'd like to just talk a little bit about is funding. Right? Uh, we met through our mutual friend, Jeff Berman of Camber Creek, and. Uh, I know you have Trinity Ventures as an investor, as some other extraordinary names in the, in the VC uh, and investing space. Our, um, talk about, you know, are you planning on raising in the future? Uh, w what does the expansion look like as it relates to funding? Yeah, you know, I mean, I'd say, so we, we actually uh, closed on another strategic- And you'll probably all get yelled at, excuse me, by your lawyers and your attorneys and your CFOs. You're not fundraising, but just talk about funding. Right, right. Nobody the, here is fundraising. Nobody's not, fundraising, until, okay? Like until you are, right. right. Uh, but there's a, there's a lot of money coming into multifamily. Sure. So what, 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 what do you think about that topic particularly, Karen? Well, I guess maybe I'll, I'll just start by saying my approach to fundraising, yes, in, in many ways, you're not fundraising, but you're always <laughs> fundraising, right? And I think you're always, I'm a big believer, and I say this often, it's true of hiring, it's true of investors, it's true of anything, you date before you get married. I think Jeff Berman is a great example. I've not dated Jeff Berman, so do not put that on the record. <laughs> Jeff, I mean, Jeff and I met. I have, actually. Yeah, yeah. that's fair, that's Same, fair. Yeah. But, um, Same. Just, I mean, I mean just a quick show of hands. It's the hair, man, it's the friggin' hair. Oh, he's just the best, it's he's everything. just the best. But Jeff and I built a relationship before we worked together. Right. Jeff, Jeff, I mean, like, yeah, we met, um, the company wasn't at a stage where it made sense for him to get involved. We stayed close, I kept him updated. I actually leaned on him quite frequently for either advice or guidance or introductions. Um, and we just became friends, yeah, yeah. right? And it's like, life's too short to yeah. work with people you don't want to work with on both sides. So I think for me, being able to go through that process and build relationships, it's so important. And I think that's, that's the mentality I always kind of come at this whole process with. And whether you're not actively raising right now, my job is keep money in the bank, right. hire amazing people, and work my ass off to make them successful right. and do whatever I have to do. And I take that job all, all three, yep. very, very seriously. Yeah. And part of that is um, is keeping those relationships and making new ones, right? So You see why everybody loves Karen, right? It's not too hard to see why. <laughs> um, Adam, we met through uh, John Helm, as I mentioned earlier, just an extraordinary investor in multifamily uh, space. Uh, you're not raising, but how do you approach the funding um, strategy? I'm gonna echo Karen again. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's all about relationships and you know, hitting on those three things that you know, the CEO really needs to do. It's my job to make sure the company's capitalized to a point where we're not dire and desperate for, fund for, for money, um, and creating relationships with investors so we're not starting from scratch when we're running a process. And if we are starting from scratch, I almost, and hopefully none of them hear this, I'm viewing that as for our next round because I want to get to know you over the next year rather than put you on our board and work with you for 10 years after three meetings. Right. Um, I think that's a really risky, you know, we talk about how important hiring is and how much time we spend with people and we give them assignments and references and all this and like, okay, I'm going to give you X percent of this company and a board seat after a couple of meetings. Um, it's just, it's crazy. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I think it's our job to always be creating those relationships, understanding um, from other founders. Who, who do you like working with? Who is, um, you know, every VC talks about their value add and we go to bat and we do this, but there are, you know, a specific number who back it up and understanding who those are and seeing that through other companies and, and things like that is really important. So uh, when I'm running a fundraise process, I start first and foremost with the existing relationships I have because um, I'm, 
as much as I'm getting to know them over the, the last year, they're getting to know me, and or more than a year in Jeff's case. As he's pointed me to Karen's example of how long that they had to wait for an investment. Um, <laughs> but like a Jeff Berman off the love record, fest, man. Uh, we love you, Jeff. We love you, Jeff. Um, so you know, on on their side as well, I like to show them, you know, here's here's the fundraise I have now, and here's what we're going to go do over the next 12 to 18 months. Let's talk in six. I'll give you an update. Let's talk again in 12, and I'll show you that the 18-month projections were done in 12. And uh, you know, I want to keep you involved in this business to show you how I work and to get a feel for how we work together. It's dating before we get married, as Karen said. So, um, yeah, it's I'm you know, everyone's always getting better at fundraising. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a big. Derek, I know a bunch of your investors as well. What's Bixby's approach to fundraising in this climate? Sure. So this is this is more my CEO's realm. Right. Uh, but having spoken to Mark about this plenty of times, I think he would echo exactly what what the two of you said. What I what I will say is that we we closed around this summer, so we've raised a million dollars to date. Um, we're using that money to, yeah, there you go. Uh, we're, we're using that money to grow aggressively uh, next year. And, and if anybody has any questions about our right. fundraising activities, I'm happy to put you in touch with Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's terrific. I'm a huge fan. Now, Ori, I, I, I do believe in, uh, or I don't believe in fake news. I believe in news. Uh, there's a lot of good news out there. I'm sorry about editorializing. Sorry, couldn't help myself. I think that's a new tagline. I believe in news. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I did read something about uh, Ollie recently in, in, the, in the news. I believe. Wall Street Journal? Yes, it was about fundraising and what have you. Could you talk a little bit about? Uh, uh, your I don't want to get too scale? much into fundraising in this, uh, but it, what I can say is that you know we're in a position uh, where we have gone through round A or Series A, and now we're looking at Series B. And what that's afforded me as the CTO is to build the most incredible team, to add to the incredible team that's there already our architectural team, our underwriters, our business people. So having those funds available, I'm not stressed about you know, <laughs> having uh, limitations. In, in you terms don't look of, stressed at all, actually. Yeah. You look pretty relaxed. <laughs> having limitations in terms of uh, hiring the right people um, makes my job a lot easier. Great. So you're, in other words, you're ready to scale. Amazing product. Yeah, big yes. time. That's terrific. Okay, we've got a few minutes left. What what advice uh, would you give a uh, you know somebody who's just getting into this space, Karen, and is in whether they're multifamily or what have you? It doesn't really matter if they're in CRE tech. They've got an idea for a startup. What words of wisdom do you give them? Oh my gosh, how much time? Don't do, you do have? it or no? No, 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 no. You know, listen. I mean, I mean, this is true whether you're in prop tech, whether you're in any, you know, I mean, ad tech, anything. Embrace the roller coaster. You're yeah. going to have ups. You're going to have downs. It's still something that like. I, I really try to challenge myself to like anchor into, and I know we've had conversations mm -hmm. about it. I'm sure we'll have other ones yeah, about it. So. You know, being able to embrace the ups, the downs, but also not take it too seriously. I think great leaders don't see things worse than they are, better than they are, they see them as they are. And I think just trying to stay as level as you can and say, you know what, okay, it's two o'clock in the afternoon, all right, we're going into it, okay, I've right. been here before, three o'clock in the afternoon, because sometimes it happens that fast, we're on and up, I'm not gonna take that too seriously, I'm just gonna try to stay level, stay right. even keeled. And again, embrace it, because this is what we all signed up for. Will you be my life coach? <laughs> Will you be mine? <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna replay that <laughs> over and over again. Adam, what about you? What, what advice do you give uh, somebody who wants to enter this startup? Biggest community? piece of advice would be talk and listen to customers, first and foremost. Uh, you can wireframe and think of solutions all day long, but um, talking to your customers is the highest yield activity you'll have, notably uh, when you're first getting started. And then I'd say uh, I'm a big believer in just persistence, notably in what we all do and the people we work with, uh, just being really persistent and following up. But balancing that really well with this concept, particularly at the early stage, of um, strong beliefs loosely held, where I do have a vision, I do have this this thesis and hypothesis, but in your you know trials of talking to customers and doing that discovery, being flexible and you know being open to a different version of the world, um, because if you do that and you have those those different inputs and you're curating that narrative, um, you're going to be more equipped to solve that problem than anybody else. Wonderful, Derek. So mine will be a little bit more uh, sales focused, since that's what I do. Um, but I think the persistence piece is is absolutely key. Um, staying on top of people. We're, what I am bringing to somebody is not necessarily the most important thing to that person on that day, right? These property managers are getting a million phone calls. They're putting out fires, and so and so you do have to you do have to stay persistent to get in touch with them. But the other thing, and this is more probably general advice, 
is go and meet everybody in the space. The people in PropTech are incredibly nice and incredibly helpful. Um, will help give you a lot of context, and frankly, you don't know who's going to be able to help you, who's going to be able to put you in touch with somebody, somebody who's going to be interested in the product. So. Smart, very yeah. smart. Or you've done this a few times. A few times. Um, so what advice would you impart? For a startup, I think it's important to figure out the technology right at the beginning. Or, oh, yeah. You know, so you don't have a rewrite. Forgot about that. As, <laughs> as they say, you know, any good startup has gone through three or four re rewrites in terms of technology. So you know, picking the right platform, the right partners to integrate into, I think is very important. Obviously, having the right idea and the right contacts to make that idea flourish is important. Terrific. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you, Karen. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Thank you Ori. Thank you. Um, you know, as you can see by these four extraordinary entrepreneurs, there is a lot of really exciting things happening in multifamily. Um, and uh, I think only the best days are ahead of it. And I hope you'll pay attention to all four of these platforms in the uh, near future. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.